So we'll, we'll do a little reconnaissance dive first, and then we'll go to work. Okay. Okay. As an archaeologist with an interest in old submarines, I'd like to say that I purposely set out to find Julius Kroll's sub explorer. But the simple truth is I was on vacation sailing on the coast of Panama in 2001. The fishermen on a nearby island told of a submarine, a World War II Japanese midget submarine, that appeared each day at low tide. Now, I thought that was pretty incredible, if not outright impossible. But after years of sea hunting with Clive Costler, I've come to realize that sometimes the truth can be stranger than fiction. As the tide dropped, it was clear that this was not a World War II Japanese midget submarine. It was something else, something very old. But just how old and just whose submarine it was, was unknown. Returning to the site with Mike and Warren, we made our way to the stern and there were rewarded with the discovery that the sand had moved away and revealed a hole that had been battered into the bottom of the submarine. We were able to just barely squeeze up under it and then into the sub. As we swam inside to do all of the documentation, I was struck by the fact that between four to six guys would have worked in this sub when it was operating. And now, here we were, just two or three of us, moving in these tight quarters to do the work of archaeology. Entering that crew compartment to find that it was half filled with sand, it was clear that more work would be needed and that we would have to excavate the interior in order to learn more about the submarine. As Warren and Mike worked with the nozzle, I, I floated close by underwater watching everything that they were doing. As we moved into the areas that needed a little bit more delicate work, we cycled back on the, the water pressure and very carefully moved the sand away to reveal a fair amount of material that had fallen to the bottom of the sub and lay there, including an instrument, a, a gauge with glass and mercury still in it. That meant the time had come to stop digging and to start documenting what we'd found. Todd Croteau, working with an underwater slate and with a pencil to draw on plastic film, used a tape measure to carefully plot in everything that we'd found and to draw the finds inside while Mike and Warren photographed and videotaped them. All that work meant that when we came out of the water, we had a detailed record of just what lay inside Submarine Explorer. And that information, never before documented, was now being pulled together to make a comprehensive plan of Julius Kroll's incredible invention. Needing to take advantage of high tide, Mike and Warren waited until midnight to make their final dive. Clive Cussler likes to say, a shipwreck will only be found when it's ready. If it hadn't been for a chance encounter and the curiosity of James Delgado, this little submarine may have been lost forever. Lost in the sense that it may have simply dissolved into the sea, with people continuing to incorrectly assume that it had been a mini Japanese submarine from World War II. And had it dissolved into the sea and the evidence lost, who then could make a case for its true identity? With their work here now done, it was time to bid farewell to the island paradise with its lone iron resident, 